and welcome to this week's Hashtag Tour to Tour. I'm joined as always by Spencer and this week probably one of the nicest men in boxing, Manchester's Anthony Crawler. Anthony, thank you for coming in. Nice to be here with you both. How have you been? All good, thank you. Just training hard for October the 7th. So in the real uh, business part of camp now. But um, it's good to uh, have a little bit of a day off for you guys and then um, back in the gym tomorrow. Well, I'll do a bit tonight actually when I get home. But, have you uh, found the transition like since like losing your title in such an epic fight and now coming back? How do you, has things changed towards you? Is your mindset? I, how's it on? A little bit. We pointed out earlier. Listen, yeah. no, no flashy suit. I'm, I was waiting for it. Found <laughs> out. Sit down. Like, found out it was coming less than 24 hours notice. <laughs> Standard class on the train. It's all changed, son. Yeah. It's all changed. You know what, but no, it's right. Until I get that title back, then um, I get my first class ticket back on the train. You let me down with your attire, because like this morning, my missus, we're looking for the itinerary. What we were saying, my missus asked uh, Spence, and any colours on? You got to look smart, because that boy can. He puts <laughs> it together. Nah, I've he's got it. I've had an off day today. I thought he was a builder. Hey. <laughs> And also Callum Smith as well. How's he doing in training? Callum, Callum looks really well. Honestly, he does he looks um, he looks brilliant? Weight's very good. He's um, he's been and he's he's one of them. He's been in the gym for a while, but I feel like he's peaking at the right time. Like because he had the the old WBC. Jack gave up. Uh, do Jack give it up? And then Callum was meant to fight the Durrell brother. He pulled that. Yeah, it was dates got changed. So then he goes in a uh, super series. So he's nice now. So uh, look forward to that. And uh, now he's ready for Saturday night. That's great. Okay. Well, we'll get started. Lots of tweets in, mostly about uh, Golovkin Canelo. First one: the boxing madman. Does the winner of Golovkin Canelo become the number one pound for pound king? Do they also become a top five best ever middleweight? Spence, you can start us off on that one. No, and that's that. Seriously. And it's the bottom line, as uh, I keep on saying this time and time again, that um, Mr. Ward, Andre Ward, is the pound for pound number one king, followed by maybe Terence Crawford and maybe Lomachenko. Um, these two fighting, they, it's, 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 a, it's a great fight. They're one of the pound for pound best, but I wouldn't say they're the number one. No, I wouldn't at all. I thought um, the Kovalev versus Andre Ward debate, and when those two fought, and then Andre Ward won properly this time, I would say that puts him at number one spot. But there's an argument. This is a great thing about boxing. I'm with Spencer. Zach are the same in there with the Andre Ward, Kovalev shout. Um, but this fight, I think it, it certainly gives him a claim to be right up there. And it's... Um, it's a great it's fight. One of, yeah, it's one of the, for me, it's one of the most anticipated fights. No matter what you say, it's, it's the biggest fight, I believe, in boxing that can be made. One right million now. percent. But, sorry, I would not say that it'll put um, either of them top five pound for pound of all time in the middleweight division where you've had great men like Shugray Robinson, Carlos Monzon, Marvin Hagler, Bernard Hopkins, Harry Greb who we've never seen video footage of but read about the guy then I wouldn't say that it puts them top five uh, all time middleweights but it puts them in the top ten. Dan Frost has tweeted in Triple G looked vulnerable last time against Jacobs but styles make fights is this the reason why Canelo is confident and now taking this fight? I feel that I feel Canelo had to take this fight now because there was only a, a matter of time. Some people will say avoided, some say not. Um, but I don't I don't believe that last fight with Jacobs has anything to do with Canelo's or Canelo's team's decision to to take that fight because stylistically so so different. And I mean you saw the pictures and the videos of Canelo he looks in unbelievable shape, and I, I think he'll get into the ring. On um, Saturday night, weighing heavier. That's what I think. On um, Saturday, but height-wise, stylistically, very different to Daniel Jacobs. And Daniel Jacobs is a very, very underrated fighter. He's very fighter. underrated fighter. And um, it was, it was close last time out. Like say with Glovkin, both had, you know, an argument um, for the win. But I, th I believe this fight had to be made. Um, it's, it's the biggest fight in boxing, like I've just said. Hopefully, both guys getting a great payday. And um, it, it, had to, it had to be made, and um, fair play to the promoters, the people behind the scenes doing it. They've, uh, they've put it together, and the fans are the winners here, and hopefully Saturday night we're going to see a great fight. What do you think, Spence? Um, if you watch the Danny Jacobs fight, which was an excellent fight, um, what Danny Jacobs did in that fight was actually administer body shots onto um, Triple G, and if you look at Golovkin, it, they hurt him. Mm. But he's very 
poker face, you know, that's yeah. a hiding, like it's nothing, face, and you yeah, can, yeah. you can just keep on exactly. plodding forward. Um, my concern in this fight is this: is like with Canelo, Canelo had to take this fight anyway. Right, there's no more, and it's no disrespect to Leon Smith. There's yeah. no more Leon Smith fights out there. There's no more Amir Khan fights out there. This is a fight that you had to take, but everything's timing, as Baba Tundi Ajayi always tells me. Everything is timing, and it's the right time for him to go in there. I've had my reservations about um, Golovkin for years, and this is not saying that he's not a good fighter. He's excellent. I've had my reservations because people or young kids who ain't used to looking at punching power get gassed up. They're seeing punching power and like, oh my word! Like, I've grown up watching Julian Jackson. I've grown up with Nigel Benn. I've grown up with real punch. Tommy Hearns, big right hand. I've grown up with these middleweights who are punches. So I've never been old, but he's very good. But Canelo, he's got an excellent jab and he's got very good body work. And I tip Canelo to win this fight. It's not going to be easy, but I tip him to win it, especially if it goes points. Dan Williamson, when was the last competitive fight in terms of two prime big names such as Canelo and Triple G? I think the fight we just mentioned mm -hmm. earlier is uh, Andrew Ward and Kovalev. Um, as be, we've been very lucky the last 12 months where we're seeing, we're seeing um, some great fights made. I think, like you look, the Floyd Mayweather Manny Pacquiao fight happened too two late. Years ago. Yeah, two years ago. Two years ago, it happened well too late. So as of late, we're seeing fighters getting there, aren't we? Um, you seem to be at the peak, or, you, you know, of their careers, fighting at the right time. Spencer. Yeah, I, th I also think it's like in terms of like to get two big names. <clears throat> even though one guy wasn't at his prime, but Andy Joshua, what he demonstrated against Klitschko, even though Klitschko wasn't at his prime, but. The knowledge and the eye, the ring IQ of, of Klitschko is, is head and shoulders way surpass anything that Andy Joshua remotely knows. I think Klitschko knows more in his big toe than, than what Andy Joshua knows in boxing. There's no disrespect to Andy Joshua, right? So I thought that was a great fight. So we're seeing so many competitive fights yeah. now because not only that, but we the fans have a platform on social media to air their opinions yeah. to say, well, these are fights that we don't want to see. They air them so much that you have promoters now who listen to the fans. On them, yeah. It does. And it's been great that we are seeing this and we're seeing more of it. And, uh, and I think that's why it makes our sport so great. Darren Jones, who does Billy Joe Saunders have a better chance of beating, Canelo or Golovkin, providing he retains his title Saturday night? Golovkin. Because he is an out and out boxer. And I think he, seriously, not only that, I think that Canelo's been in a better class of opponent than what Golovkin has. But regardless of that, Golovkin will be in with good guys and just beat them up. So, but I think he'd have the better chance against Golovkin. That's my open opinion. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think I'm going to go with Spencer again. It's, it's a tough one. Listen, both very tough fights, uh, both great fighters. But I think stylistically, um, Billy Joe, Billy Joe is very underrated. He's got great movement, great, great movement. And if you feel that Golovkin may be a little bit more suited to him, if he feels the need, he can just walk him down. Um, Billy Joe might have the chance of, I agree. you know, outboxing him. And, you know, shout out there to Billy Joe. I saw the transformation in his body and every credit to Dominic England and the team there. Mate. He looks, um, it's, it's unbelievable from the last time he fought. Um, to, to this time, his, his body, total transformation, looks brilliant. And I'd also have to give Dominic Ingle a lot of credit for the simple fact is Dominic Ingle, from the Ingle, the Winkerbank gym, where Johnny Nelson, Nassim Hamid, Hill yeah. Graham, they were all movers. The, him being with with him as a trainer, him him being down there, now with, with the Ingles, that will suit him ten times over than anybody else who was like more aggressive kind of style of fighting. This will suit him because he will revert back to his hit and hop it kind of yeah. style and he can punch as well. Steve Parsons, how big a compliment is it to Jamie Moore that Kyle Frampton asked him to be his trainer over more higher profile names? Massive compliment. It's a huge compliment. I mean, I'm, I think Kyle Frampton could walk into almost any professional gym to any professional trainer um, in the world and they'd be happy you think, to... You think Joe would have trained him? You think Joe Gallagher yeah. would have trained him? <laughs> Man, yeah, that's I was asking that. No. Uh, uh, well, <laughs> I said almost. No, but listen, I think... Carl, you know what I'm saying, Carl. He could big. walk into, any, you know, to any professional trainer. I don't think that um, there'd be very, very few, if any, who would, who would turn Carl away. So, for Carl to go to Jamie, um, it's a great compliment to Jamie. Really happy for him. Jamie's a grafter. I saw him last week. He's um, happy to help Carl, and I really hope that they gel, and it's the start of um, a great relationship. What was it in Jamie Miller that you think attracted? 
Hal Frampton to him as a trainer? Good question. Good I, think question. He's, I think it's um, Jamie Moore's honesty. Yeah. He's a is. very sound, honest human being. Yeah. Straight. Right? Yeah. And especially like within, you think about this, this sport of boxing has a reputation of being dirty and, and do you know what I mean, manipulative and things yeah. like that. And Jamie Moore is an honest person. And I believe in life that you don't get what you want, but you get what you are. And Jamie's honest. So I think they're on the same vibrational frequency level and they think, oh, I can relate to this guy. And, he, and Jamie knows boxing, yeah. right? So it couldn't happen to a better person. It's a great compliment, but obviously, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's comfortability. And I think Jamie will make him feel comfortable, but he'll also push him as well. Yeah. Thomas Lyons, do you feel Pulev will present any greater threat to Joshua than Klitschko, or is he just a weaker version of Klitschko? Pardon me? <laughs> who, who put this question in there? We've got to talk to our producers. <laughs> uh, did you see, did you see this diabolical liberty that they're saying right here? That Pulev is, is, like a, a, is like a weaker version of Klitschko? They fight nothing like each other. And they put this question in there. No, he's not, but he will cause trouble. I'm telling you, he, you know why he will? Did you see his eyes? Did you, you know see what? the guy's eyes? Yeah, no, he's, he's on <laughs> He free, wants it, you know? Listen, I, do you know what? I'll, I'll put it out Just there going to knock him out, but he's, he wants it. It's not my uh, my proudest tip, but I actually thought Pulev was going to be the man to uh, dethrone Klitschko, really? and Klitschko ended up putting, Vladimir ended up putting him one of his uh, best performances, so... No, but I certainly he think was your hurt. last question. He was hurt, though. He was hurt before he knocked him out, though. Yeah, no. I mean, people have hurt him. Very solid, great amateur background. And we've got to remember with um, Andy Joshua, he's still learning. He's still an experience. I always say it sounds crazy, an Olympic gold medalist, unified world champion. It's, um, it's crazy to say that, but he is still learning. He is still learning. And, and Pulev, I, I saw a quote, I can't think where I saw it, and it says, Pulev, I mean, you're always improving, you're always learning this game, but... He's learnt the job, whereas Andy Joshua is still learning. Yeah. Is that if that makes sense? I, I totally agree with you. But the thing about it is, this, when you have punching power like Andy Joshua, yeah. you can learn on the job all you want because you know what? Not only that, but Andy Joshua has this spite and he gets bursts of energy where you don't yeah. think he's going to get these bursts of energy. And I watched Pulev versus Dirk Chisora. And Derek Sazor was having relative success against him. Pulev's a very, very capable fighter. Very, he's very yeah. astute. He knows what he's yeah, doing. No, he's got he's good ring, room, cute, good solid. ring generalship. But when you're dealing with a proposition like an Anthony Joshua, Anthony Joshua leaves no stone unturned. And Anthony Joshua should be able to dominate him with a jab. But for the first three rounds, it's going to be interesting because Pulev does fancy that overhand right. Yeah. And Joshua's got to be careful of that. What does Pulev need to do to beat AJ? I think you said then, like, he's got a lot to sort of close the distance and that over and right over the AJ jab is it in my opinion but he's got to be smart on the way in I don't think he can't just tuck up and um, expect expect to um, walk big AJ down I don't I think he's got to be cute and like see he's got a great amateur pedigree but I think I think he's, if he's, he's to have any chance against Anthony Joshua which which he does he does have a certainly at, um, in heavyweight boxing you're only a punch away but um, I think early on he has to be smart, he has to be very cute early on. Okay. And reflecting on this weekend, Chris Johnson, after u six performance on the weekend, do you think he could handle the size and power at heavyweight if he moved up after the WBFF? Um, did you see him on the weekend? I that guy's I, mustard. I think he's unbelievable. I've watched he's him mustard. for a long time. And, um, I think he's um, a great fighter and to answer Chris's question, without a doubt, yes, I do. It's um, He's got this confidence about him as well. It's like Hook for a lot of people would have been seen as as a tough fight, a hard night's work. But he made it look easy. He made it look so easy. And me and Callum Smith were actually saying this the other day. I think they're very good mates. That I know from the same camp. Lomachenko, and, um, yeah, yeah. He's like a big yeah. Lomachenko. <laughs> you know, if he, he doesn't move like a cruiserweight, in my opinion, and I genuinely think he can win this tournament, and he will win this tournament. Um, and then he goes on and he wins a world title at heavyweight. Can he handle, it says there, um, you know, the size. If you look in the World Series of Boxing, um, he, didn't lose, he didn't lose in the World Series of Boxing, you know, in the amateurs. Yeah, he beat Joey and, Joyce in that. Joyce, yeah. Quali and Joyce is quality. Brilliant, quality amateur. He's an Olympic silver medalist. Um, some people thought he'd done enough in that final against uh, the Frenchman. Um, and it's, I just... I just feel that he could he could move up to heavyweight and um, and win world titles at heavyweight. Yeah, I do. What do you think, Spencer? Do you agree that he could um, move up? 
I've, well, listen, when you say win titles at heavyweight, we've got Andy Joshua there. I think Andy Joshua will be there for a long time. If Andy Joshua weren't there, then I think he'll have a chance at heavyweight. But for, he's very, very good. And I like the fact that for a big man, he can move. He, you know what I mean? Yeah. He can move and he knows how to gauge range. Like, he'll be, uh, yeah, yeah, he does. He's got very, very good judgment of, of range. He, like, he'll, he'll be out far and he'll snap his jab, then he'll come in with a big power shot. Some engine on him as yeah. well for a big guy. And he can put he puts together combinations so well. Very, very good fighter. And it's mad because like the cruiserweights now are the old heavyweights of the past. So I think he could move up, but stay away from AJ. That's mm. what I'm saying to you. Because AJ will <laughs> smoke your boots. <laughs> okay, that's all for this week. My thanks to Spencer and Anthony. Anthony, good luck for October Thank 7. You very much. Tune yeah. in next week for more hashtag tour to tour.